Hello and welcome back to the Cinch YouTube channel. Now, the car next to me is the new Renault Austral e-hybrid and it fits into the most popular segment in the UK by far. This is a competitive category with cars like the Peugeot 3008, the Toyota RAV4 and at the top end of it, things like the BMW X3. Now, this car has its work cut out to convince buyers to go for it, but it does come packed with technology, both under the bonnet, on the front of it and also inside. And in this video, we're going to run through all of those details and see how it drives. Now, this thing kind of replaces the discontinued Renault Kadjar, and it's about the same size, but because it's an e-tech model, it has a hybrid motor under the bonnet. In fact, it has a turbocharged three-cylinder little 1.2-litre petrol engine, but that is assisted by a pair of electric motors, which are powered by a tiny two kilowatt hour battery, which is located under the front passengers. But that means altogether, you actually have 200 horsepower and 205 newton meters of torque. And Renault reckons you can get way over 600 miles out of this thing if you brim the tank and you drive it efficiently, which I'll be doing in a little bit. Now, while there's a lot going on under the bonnet, all of the power does get put to the road all through these front wheels. But interestingly, this gearbox in this car doesn't firstly have a clutch and also it's a non-service item. You'll never have to change the oil in this because it's a frictionless gearbox. Now, it's very complicated but effectively it uses software and really smart electric motors to enable the gears to change seamlessly so you've got no wear inside the gearbox and it also means there are four gears for your petrol motor and then two separate gears for the electric motors so it will do 0 to 62 in about just under nine seconds and a bit over 100 miles per hour but despite having that tiny little battery that means it will actually do 70 miles per hour in fully electric mode that's the UK speed limit on motorways so it's going to be one of the most competitive cars in the non-plug-in hybrid category. Now, when it comes to the wheels at the back of the car, well, if you go for a top-grade car like the one we have here, it costs over 39 grand, which is almost five grand more than the base model, but it does mean that these rear wheels will get some steering. It will help to improve your maneuverability, which we will test in a little moment. But it also means on the rear suspension, you've got a multi-link setup. Now, if that means nothing to you, just know it's more complicated and therefore better and improves the ride compared to the standard beam system. Now, despite having all of that tech and all of those systems, it's handy to know that this car can actually still tow 1.5 tons of brake trailer. So in the UK, where we like caravanning and towing other cars, for example, this thing, if you spec a tow bar on it, can do what most other cars in this class can as well. Before we hit the road, don't forget to click that subscribe button. All right, so behind the wheel of this Renault Austral, there was the potential for this car to feel so overcomplicated because it has so much technology on it. And of course, with all these systems, there's a lot of stuff to think about potentially when you're driving. But I have found immediately that this car in its default setting is really refined. I like the way that they've tuned the, the powertrain, the electric motor and that petrol engine to work very seamlessly in the background. You're not really conscious of what it's doing if you leave it in its default mode, but you know it is saving you fuel because it says you're averaging 50 or 50 55 miles per gallon on the dash. And actually most of the time when I've been driving around at town speed, give or take up to about 40 miles per hour, the engine has been off. Now Renault refuses to give us a mileage claim for what this thing will do in purely electric mode, mainly because I think they said it's just so variable, it depends on how you drive. But I'm driving fairly economically and I've barely seen the engine on. It only comes in and kicks on either to get us away when I'm putting my foot down or I've noticed a few times, I think when the battery's dipped a bit lower, it comes on to charge it up. And that's really smart. It means you've basically got a range extended electric vehicle for some of your driving. But of course we do have 200 horsepower and 205 newton meters of torque to play with from that turbocharged 1.2 and the electric motors. And also the battery for the car, the normal battery that is, the thing that powers all your ancillaries, well that's in the boot. So the weight distribution for this car is pretty good with most of the attention focused at the front end. So it should steer and handle all right, and I can put that to the test. Let's see how that power feels. Renault claims 0 to 62 in 8.7 seconds, and it's quick enough. It, it moves, there's a lovely delivery of smooth electric torque. The engine doesn't really shout or scream in the background, which is nice. Sometimes they can sound a bit wheezy. It's quick enough, but it's not gonna blow your socks off. As for the ride, well, I must admit on this top of the range model, with these 20 inch alloy wheels, which are the biggest wheels you can get on this car, it's a little bit fidgety and the roads we're on today are typical B roads and a little bit of town with some speed humps as well around Windsor. And I must say, as I go over two drain covers, just a little bit firm on the fidgety stuff. It's actually really good over the bigger, bigger undulations, but when it comes to the small and high frequency bumps, which we have plenty of in the UK, it does thud around a little bit. I'm not being jiggled around in my seat too much, but I'm very aware of the weight of those wheels. So if you're looking for a really supple ride, I think this car might not be able to achieve that. You can't adjust the suspension, for example, into a softer mode. 
but when it comes to actually the way the car gets down the road, it does steer very nicely. Firstly, I love the steering wheel. It's got nice thin rims, the steering wheel. And because you have a four wheel steering system, which I'll explain in more detail in just a sec, how that feels. Well, because you have that, it means it does feel pretty agile. This is a fairly large car, but it goes around corners like something a little bit smaller. Now that four wheel steering system isn't standard on the Austral, but it is on the top of the range model, which we're in now. So you've got to spend over 39 grand to get access to it as standard. And that also comes with an independent rear suspension system. Other models below that get just a beam axle. So basically the one you want, of course, is the top of the range model if you want to experience the best of Austral. And how it feels on the road? Well, at higher speed, the four wheel steering steering isn't really making a difference at higher speed because you wouldn't want it to make you feel unstable but if you get down to a lower speed as I shall now and you go around a bend it makes the turning cycle of this car unbelievably good I mean all right it's not London cabbie good but it's better and this is genuinely proven it's better than a mini and also the Renault Clio which obviously don't either of them don't get four-wheel steering so if I go around this corner here at about 20 mile an hour it just feels like I'm having a very low speed oversteer moment, but of course I'm not, I'm not sliding out of the back. The back of the car is just coming around with me. And you'll see in a second on some of the footage where we actually managed to do a full turning circle just to show you how much the rear wheels are moving. This thing will go round with a 10.1 metre turning circle, which is more than a metre smaller than what it would be in the lower grade models without that all wheel steering. So if you're looking at one of these, highly recommended, I would say, to tick that box and get that system. You can, of course, switch through drive modes. You've got your normal stuff, eco, you've got normal and a sport. Wouldn't bother with a sport mode. It makes it feel quicker, but the eco and the comfort modes actually as well really just feel much more natural. The way the car accelerates smoothly is where it feels its happiest. As for going around corners, well, there's one up ahead here. If I allow the car to get up to the speed limit, up to 60, it just doesn't have the, the comfort in the ride that I want, but yeah, it does turn this corner quite nicely and it's not rolling around, which is gonna be good for stability. And if you manage to arrive into a corner too quickly, it's good stability. It's all right to drive, you know, and in town especially, it really shrinks around you, which is gonna be key because let's face it, it's a big car, but it's front wheel drive, it's a family car, and many people will spend either life on the motorway or probably life in town. That said, if you do find yourself in a tricky scenario, this car comes packed with driver assistance features. In fact, Renault claims and brags, and rightfully so if it's true, it says that this has more driver assistance features than any car of this class. There are a lot of features on this car. It's got 360 view cameras, the visibility in itself is excellent, but you're assisted very, very well with the, with the sensors around the car. And then you've also got autonomous emergency braking, both front and rear. And also this car comes packed with airbags and apparently it's very, very strong as well because it's using a new platform shared with other brands like Nissan, who Renault does partner with, but new for Renault. Also, the head-up display in this car is properly big. It's projected directly onto the windscreen, so you don't get a little screen that pops out of the dash like some cars. This is just in your line of sight, in the windscreen, and you've got loads of info. You've got your speed, your speed limit, also your sat-nav directions, and I can see what my adaptive cruise control is set to as well, so I can see the distance I'm at to the car ahead. It's really, really useful, really good, and if you're a bit nervous on the motorway, it takes a lot of the effort out of the driving. As long as you've got your hands on the steering wheel and you're looking ahead, well, the car will do a lot of the work for you. It'll help you with the steering it will control your accelerator and your brake and it will also manage the traffic ahead of you if you're in a queue of traffic in fact you don't just have to be driving this thing to feel how high tech it is that four-wheel steering and the way the powertrain just works so effectively in the background it's not just that stuff that screams technology in this car it's also the big screens you are looking at so i think we should pull over so i can show you in more detail just how much stuff they can do and what they can control now looking closely at this car's interior, it is of course the top of the range model, the iconic Esprit Alpine. You can go down to a standard iconic model, but this one here comes with a mixture of some high grade suede, some nice cross stitching colors. We've got blue from the Alpine logo in the headrest as well. So it feels really nice, but really what stands out in this car is its double infotainment system here. You've got your digital instrument cluster, which is very, very wide indeed. And as I mentioned, when we were driving it, you've got that big head up display as well. So just looking dead ahead of you, there's loads of information and it's super, super sharp. 
I really like the graphics and because it's all Google, this system is an entirely Google operated system. It's very, very familiar for most of us. If you use a smartphone, you're probably very familiar with Google's maps. And that's what you're looking at when you've got the sat nav running in front of you. Now, when it comes to the system in the middle, well, there's also a lot of unique features in this that are bespoke to Renault. It's quick to respond, just like a smartphone. Although I do suppose most of you aren't gonna be cycling through the standard menus. You're probably just gonna plug in your phone and get Apple CarPlay or Android Auto on. Oh, and this system is so integrated with Google that it can actually work with your Google system if you have that set up at home. So for example, you could ask the system, hey Google, turn my kettle on at home. And the infotainment system also helps when you're driving. I mean, not least because when you put the car into reverse, you get access to 360 degrees of cameras here. As you can see, you've got a full range of view and that's true for when you're reversing or also when you're driving away as well. So you won't miss any unsighted low objects. Now in the back, while we don't have much tech to play with, a couple of USB-C ports and some vents is all you're gonna get. We do have good amounts of space. Firstly, I've got loads of room above me here with this panoramic sunroof, and also I've got decent legroom. In fact, Renault claims this has the most legroom of any car in this class. While it's not Mercedes S-Class spacious, I have got good room for my knees over here. But if you prefer to have more boot space because you've got no one in the back here, you can move this entire row forward like this. So. It's pretty versatile, but that boot also has some big claims for space. Renault claims 455 litres of space in the boot, which is actually very, very big. Certainly, it's enough for a family to throw a few suitcases in, but that's when those rear seats are slid forwards. In actual fact, when the seats are in their normal position, you have something closer to 430 litres, which, yeah, still is enough for some suitcases, but it's also far from the class's best. So this all-new car from Renault has a lot of things to like, mainly relating to the amount of tech it has on board of it, but also how easy it is to drive. It's spacious, it's comfortable, although I wish the ride was a little little bit more supple, but because it has all of that technology which melds so seamlessly with your life, especially if you use Google systems at home as well, well, I think that's going to be a big draw for people. Whether it can draw in people who normally go for BMWs and Mercs is another thing, but I think if you're already looking at things like that Peugeot 3008 or the Nissan Qashqai, which this is somewhat related to, well, then this thing is going to be very tempting indeed. It's priced competitively and, well, it looks really good as well, doesn't it? What do you think though? Let us know in the comments below, and if you enjoyed the video, do get clicking that subscribe button if you haven't already. See ya.